visualizing all the different ways. Just keep playing them out in my head, you know? I just can't pick a method that makes me happy. Well, you can always use a knife. A knife cuts through flesh real easy. And use a gun. Quick and personal, it's cold. Mm. No, it's got to be slow. Rope. Rope slowly squeezes the life out of a body. It takes time. Then again, there's always poison. Hmm, maybe poison. Yeah, the poison's obvious. It gets the job done. And with no visible evidence left at the scene. But I want there to be trace evidence. Lots of it. Well, then the redder the better. Use a gun or a knife. You sure you got the guts for this? Yeah, I do. Because this murder is all a part of the sick plan to drive the police insane. It's got to be shocking if it's going to get their attention. I mean, this is the heart of the story. Still don't buy it. You couldn't kill a fly. Well, of course... <laughs> of course I couldn't kill anyone, Billy. This is fictional characters that we're talking about. Well, I'm talking about that your story isn't realistic enough. It's a fake. Fake action, fake procedure, fake suspense. Face it. Your heart's not in the genre. You're too soft. How you scored a fat book deal with Gordon McGuire Publishing is the only mystery I see. Julia won the Doyle Award for her first short story, Billy. Tell us, Julia. How is that great American mystery novel coming along? It's been over a year since you've shared anything new about it with the group. Please, do tell. It's coming along fine. I turn in the first draft this week. I can't wait to read it. <laughs> you seem really happy lately. Mm. Something happening in your life? I'm seeing someone. It's been a little while. Um, he's intense. He's a little secretive. But I think with some encouragement, he might be the one. Encouragement? You know, but like confidence, like you give me. An ego boost. I get the impression he doesn't know what that feels like. Well, he's lucky he met you. Oh, I have something I want to show you. been busy. <laughs> I thought I was the first one to read your stuff. Oh, you are. Nobody else has seen it. Now, any advice you can give would be great. And I, I need it back as soon as possible. Okay. 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 Great. Well, I am dying to read that book when you finish it. Oh, hey, it's him. Speak of the devil. I'll see you tomorrow. We are unable to take your call at the moment. Please leave your name, number, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Julia, it's Margo. How many messages do I have to leave? I put my ass on the line for you. I negotiated your advance based on pages most publishers wouldn't even consider reading. It's been 12 months and we haven't seen a single chapter. Listen, if we don't get your book by the end of the month, you can consider the contract broken and we'll expect repayment of your advance at once.
rained summer ice the day I reported finding the first body to the police. In two days, I would turn 16, and I was anxious to begin a new life as a killer. into the station. to the aftermath. I was damned if a storm was gonna change my plans. The air in the apartment became thick with the scent of Linda's fear. She had trusted the wrong man. This is the piece of information that will make sense of all this. There's still a murderer loose out there somewhere. It's ugly, it's brutal, it's disruptive, it's exciting. It'd be quite popular. A manhunt with blood at the end. It's a bestseller. I should have been taking lessons from her. friends want to hold a memorial service, that's your business. As far as bringing such a morbid display into... Miss Crutch, what's... Miss London, I didn't expect to see you here this morning. I'm sorry I'm late. I Th suppose losing oneself in menial work is a way for some people to deal with their grief. Grief? What are you talking about? Come, sit with me over here. Would you just tell me what's going on here? Julia, Angela Drone is dead. That's possible. She took her own life late last night. No, I was with her last night. She did. I'm sorry. months and we haven't seen a single chapter. 
If we don't get your book within the next 24 hours, you can consider the contract broken and we'll expect repayment of your advance at once. Julia London, star, author, woman of letters, brilliant new talent. I'm surprised you had the nerve to show up in person after the way you avoided my phone calls. Take it. You wrote something? What's it called? Turn it on, sweetie. You're about to meet the head honchos from New York. Your book has put our little West Coast office on their radar. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Julia London, our star author. Be nice to the sun, sweetie. His name's on your paycheck. I'm waiting to meet you. Jason Connolly. Um, it's an honor to meet you. Um, I want you to know that everyone at Gordon McGuire has been nothing but gracious to me. Well, Trent, Julia, this is Trent Dodson. He's my right hand. He's going to be shadowing you on the tour. If there's anything you need, he's your go-to guy. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's really nice to meet you. Trent, I think it's time Julia met the other authors. Absolutely. And this is just the beginning. Wait till you hit that talk show circuit. They're going to eat you up. Everybody, Julia. Julia, I'm Don Crown, yes. author of Kiss Me When I'm Dead. That's a hell of a book you wrote. Hell of a book. Well, thank you, Don. Uh, I especially liked your darker passages. Thank you. I'm Rhonda Darkling. I wrote Ten Little Witches. Yes. Oh, you know, the kids at the library that I used to work at, they used to love your books. The, the adults did, too. I'm Catherine Howell. Hello. Allow me to say that your book is a cool drink of water in a desert of mediocrity. And, and your work, Incident at the Cotswolds, my goodness, it's wonderful. Victorian mysteries are my favorite. Please call me Julia. Catherine. Thank you. Can I sign that for you? Oh, sure, please. Um, make it to, uh, Baxter Kyle. Detective Baxter Kyle. Detective? Well, hello. I'm Julia Linden. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good grip you got there. Strong handshake. <laughs> Thank you. You're not so bad yourself. <laughs> so do cops usually attend events like this? Oh, well, I helped out, uh, one of Gordon McGuire's authors a little while back with some research. Right. Hey, um, no, I'm on the permanent invite list now. <laughs> well, I can't wait to read this. And if you, uh, if you ever need a police escort, Oh, you'll be the first I ask. Excuse me. Uh, Julia, there's someone that I want you to meet. Just a moment. It's good to meet you. You too. Thanks. Goodness, that's, that's wondering about me. Julia, I want you to meet the woman who's going to take your career to the next level. Ah, I'm Cricket Jones. I've been so anxious to meet you. I read your book five times. I loved it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you represent all the top writers in the business. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Cricket's staying at the Roosevelt, too. And I put you guys in rooms right next to each other. So, what are you working on next? I haven't decided, um, but I was thinking something non-genre, maybe a historical romance. Hmm. No, history's old news, Julia. Trust me. You should really do... A proper follow-up. Establish your voice. It's all about branding these days. She's kidding. It's gonna be a sequel. Margot, I said no sequel. This is this was a literary experiment, not the beginning of some Is this artistic temperament? I don't think you're being fair, Julia. You owe your fans a little something after all their adoration. 
Look, you are on the cusp of greatness. One more book will put you over the top. This is a story about a maniac who kills people and makes it look like a suicide. What more is there to tell? Write the sequel, Julia. But what if it doesn't measure up? You know how sequels are. What if I can't find that voice again? Just do what you did the first time. Actually, that's a very pretty name. Is that... Oh, how old is she? Exactly. Yeah, it's just a... Would you like me to sign that for you? Can I ask you a question? Certainly. How did you know so much about me? How were you able to steal the voices that I hear so perfectly? You've been spying on me. Hidden microphones in my hospital. That's how you did it. I don't know what you're saying. That's how you stole the voices. I didn't. That's how you stole the voices. That's how you did it. You've got eyes in the sky. Eyes that see me. I don't know you're watching. Watching me when I sleep. Excuse me, sir. Who are you? I think it's best that you leave. You can't write me out! Hey, take it easy, pal. I don't know how you got in here, but it's time to leave. I see into you and hear your voices. Then leave, now, or I'll drop you into the darkest hole you've ever seen. I remember. All right, come on. Out of here, now. Are you okay? Yes, I am now. Thank you for that. No problem. I'll head outside and make sure he's not hanging around. Hmm. I think you have an admirer. to sign that wacko to a three-year book deal. So eager to please. Look who I found wandering in the lobby like the lost puppy. I had to order room upgrades for Don and Miranda. They both demanded minibars. Where are they? They'll miss all the fun. Not unless you consider talk about Trent's heroics fun. Don't believe a word of it. I had the situation well in hand. And you were quite impressive. It's like watching Mike Hammer in action. <laughs> Did you notice that I stole one of your lines? I'll drop you in the darkest hole you've ever seen. That's from Grave Misconduct. Hope you don't mind that I paraphrased it. Uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. But Don and Miranda have been flattering themselves for years. Well, I hope you all are hungry. This place serves an excellent seared ahi tuna. Oh, there you two are. Don't ask. Have you seen Cricket? She was supposed to join us. Yeah. Please tell me you already ordered, because I'm starving. Takes a lot of energy greeting all those awful people. It was all just too much, and I have to thank you for all of it. Oh, what I do is easy. Writing, that's hard. Oh, writing is hard. Grave misconduct, that wasn't so hard. Lady Chatterley's Lover. Now that's a good novel. First time I read it, I cried. I think that's why I became a writer. Mm. That's a pretty sexy book. Don't mind, Mama. Good night, Trent. Good night, Julia.
Cricket? Cricket? The phone! I know this sounds strange, but, but, but the phone was ringing and it kept stopping and starting and, and she was supposed to be at dinner tonight and she wasn't there. I just know something's wrong. I would feel better if we could just go in and check. Julia? What's going on? We just got a phone call. It's Cricket. I, I think something's wrong. Have you got a key? Please. Cricket! All right, we're gonna come in. Please. Desk, this is two. Uh, listen, you better go ahead and get the police up here. Thank you for responding so quickly. No problem. Well, I'm usually no accident reports, but body's a body. And I was still in the area. I will need to speak to the riders individually. Once Absolutely. Together. How's she doing? She's scared. Mm, it's understandable, seeing someone sprawled out like that. I heard someone shook her up pretty badly at the party after I left. Yeah, some nutcase came in and caused a scene, but... Well, I've already put out a call to the cops on the street to be on the lookout for the guy. Thank you. You have my sympathies. I know this has been a difficult evening for all of you. My best advice is that you all go back to your rooms while we finish up the accident reports. Thank you, Detective. <sighs> Do you still have a copy of my book? Sure, it's in my car. Why? Excuse me. They've moved us to a new floor. And they've got our bags ready. We need to go. Chapter 2, first paragraph. to stage an accident. So many props to dress the crime scene. A dab of lotion, a smear of shampoo, and a murder becomes another statistic. How well did you know Cricket Jones? What are you implying? Have you ever slept with her? What? Hey, I'm only going by what it says in your files here, man. <laughs> According to this, you're a regular Mike Hammer. All lies, I swear. Please, it's just an act to sell books. I'm not exactly a lady killer. No kidding. You write a lot about blood, Miss Darkling. Feeling squeamish, Detective? Were you friends with Cricket Jones? She was a publicist. They don't have friends. What about enemies? In many accounts. The hotel manager said you were the last author to show up once the body was discovered. Is that a crime? Well, there was a lot of commotion on your floor that evening. You never bothered to check it out. Well, I'm a sound sleeper. And I barely knew the woman. Well, it was a nice service. Absolutely, sir. Yes. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. I'm so sorry. Everything continues exactly as planned. Julia? Yes. I'll uh, walk you to your cab. Oh, thanks. Are you okay? Sure. Um, it's my nerves. You know, the funeral and the tour and all. You know, I've been writing murder mysteries far too long to fall for such nonsense. 
Something is wrong. Something frightening. I don't know what you're talking about. No, when you're ready to trust me, I'll be here. I know something about secrets, Julia. My pen name didn't last for long when my youthful identity was discovered. Teenage murderer slaughters chum's mum. Isn't an easy headline to live down. I was only a girl. My best friend, Lil, told me that her mother was abusing her. And I never doubted it. We murdered that woman. How did he ever come to peace with something like that? You don't. That's why I had to leave England to get away. And you go on and learn to live with the guilt. Fact or fiction? Celebrity publicist Cricket Jones was interred at Green Lawn Cemetery today, the victim of an apparent accident in her hotel room last week. Witnesses described the eerie scene as something right out of one of the violent books she championed, particularly the popular novel Grave Misconduct by author Julia London, which she was promoting. Miss London, I'm your biggest fan. Would you sign your book for me? How did you get up here? You're all over the news to mention you were staying here. Oh, nice place. What does a room like this go for? Really? How's room service in this joint? What do you want? I want you to sign my book. I know you didn't write it. What are you talking about? You're a bad liar, Julia. I've read your work, remember? I got samples of your stories. I know how you write. You didn't compose a single sentence of grave misconduct. My only question is, who did? Whatever happened to that dark-haired friend of yours? You know, the one with real talent? Oh, yeah. She died mysteriously. How curious. Just make your point. If you knew anything about the crime genre, you know what my point is. Just leave it. Do it now or I'll call the police. My card. Bye bye now. Is that creep harassing you? Um, no. He's fine. All right, everyone, listen up. I know recent events have cast a pall on this tour, but Jason Conley is trusting that all of you will soldier on in the face of this tragedy. Cricket's death was a real loss to our world, but we honor her by our actions. So I'm going to bring Yana Miller in to meet all of you. Don't disappoint. God, she drives me crazy. You okay? Yeah. You know, you've had quite a shock. If you're not up for this, you don't have to do it. I'll get myself some water. No, no, no. I'll get you some water. Thank you. There you go. Well, they're almost ready. I'll go make sure everything's all right. Mm. Hello, everyone. You all know me. I'm Yana Miller. Miss Miller, it, it is such a pleasure. I just loved your special on celebrity marriages. Oh, yes, that really was a great one, wasn't it? Few people realize the pressure of arranging a wedding that is going to be scrutinized by the public. <laughs> now, here's the woman I really want to get some face time with. Hi, I'm Julia London. Of course you are. Smile for the camera, dear. I love your novel. Between you and me, I'm planning to feature it on my book club next month. The controversy will do wonders for both of us. I don't know what to say. Um... Say thank you, Yana. We're on in five. All right, people, let's go. Murder, mayhem, mystery. We are all drawn to the dark side of life. Whether it's slowing the car to get a peek at the scene of an accident, 
or settling down with an expertly crafted novel that deals in the grisly and the macabre. There's a little voyeurism in each and every one of us. The need to see something bad happen to someone and then thank our lucky stars that someone isn't us. Why do murder, mystery, and mayhem excite us so much? Today, we ask four authors who have devoted their lives to these very subjects. Julia London, author of Grave Misconduct, a book that deals with a vicious serial killer who disguises his murders as suicides. All the more intriguing because this is her first novel. I'll ask the obvious question first. Where do you get your ideas? Um, well, I think that writers uh, get their inspiration from many different places. I know the four of us sure do. This book uh, just sort of fell into my lap. Tell me, Julia, how did you steal it? I beg your pardon? How did you deal with it? All that bloody murder. How were you able to so easily get into the mind of a psychopath? I, I think as a writer, you, you get inspired and you have to get into the minds of your characters. Angela. Shot. That always helps me. No, please, no needles. I have a problem with the needles. This is just stress related. I mean, the pressure of the tour, the accident. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, so what do you think? Listen, I'm... I have been in this business long enough to see much stranger things. Like the man said, it's stress. Your meltdown does have a positive aspect to it. What? Oh, it'll be on every news outlet. And I'll bet we can get Yana to uh, have a special just about you. Meg says you're gonna be just fine. Just gotta take it easy. I'm gonna go back and check on the others at the hotel. I'll be back in a few minutes. I saw you on TV. How did you get this number? Well, you're a public figure now. And I've got my ear to the ground. Just like a bottom feeder like you are. Shut up and listen. You and I have unattended business to complete. What makes you think I'd have any more to do with you? Like I said before, you're soft. And you know, this exposure, it's not the kind that sells books. My address is on the card again. You're looking a lot better. Can someone take me to the hotel? Of course. Margo will be on the phone the rest of the afternoon, so I'll take you. Mm. You okay? Oh, I'll be fine. I don't know how to do this. I mean, how do you just smile and pretend none of this happened? Well, it's part of the sacrifice for being a public figure. Why can't I be one of those reclusive riders that never sees a light of day? For someone as beautiful as you, that would be a damn shame. What you need is rest. You just put today behind you. Look to the future. All right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad I met you. Me too. 
Mm. You sleep well. When did you write this? A few days ago. He came to the hotel. Drop dead. I guess that's what you writers call a foreshadowing. Was he blackmailing you? He wanted to talk to me. He wanted to talk. He said he had a proposition for me. Proposition? What kind of proposition? The private kind. Listen, Julia, I don't like secrets and lies, especially the kind that end up with someone on a slab. I walked in on it. He killed himself. Right. Everything points to a suicide. Except for the fact that this plays out exactly like the events in Chapter 12 of Grave Misconduct. That's right, I read it. Look, I know you're hiding something, and you don't have to tell me. But I get the feeling you want to. I don't know where to start. Best place to start a book is always at the beginning. So the cliché goes. Julia, let's say another word. You're unbelievable, detective. Last time I checked, Miranda was still in effect, unless, of course, that's been done away with along with the Fourth Amendment. She didn't ask for a lawyer, and I haven't arrested her yet. We were just having a little chat. Well, if she's not under arrest, then she's free to go. You've got nothing on her. I got a body in the morgue and your author at the scene. Did you know she had a history with the deceased? I'm well aware of Mr. Speck. He contacted Gordon McGuire last week and threatened to ruin Julia's reputation unless we paid him. He's been harassing us ever since. He never told me that. I couldn't. Orders are orders. So Speck was going after Julia and the publisher, huh? Busy guy. This interrogation is over, detective. We've already dug up all the info you need on Billy Speck. The man hounded famous authors for a living. He was a self-destructive criminal who couldn't live with his actions, and he decided to put his neck in a noose. End of story. All right. 
Oh. I'm here if you need to talk. The only thing she needs is to get out of this place. Julia, you're supposed to call me the moment anything like this happens. Anything, you understand? Yes, ma'am. I can't run interference if I'm kept out of the loop. It just happened so fast. Too fast for you to pick up your cell phone. What were you doing there anyway? Never mind, I don't want to know. This isn't Julia's fault. It's some small-minded creep checking out. Just like in the book. What do you mean? Chapter 12 of Grave Misconduct. Killer sets up the murder to make it look like the victim hung himself. It's just coincidence. Though your writing is realistic enough to inspire a copycat. Maybe there's a way we can spin it to our advantage. Um, I don't feel comfortable with exploiting this man's death. It's not exploitation, sweetie. It's free advertisement. Hmm. It's the closest this spec guy will ever come to your level of fame. We stay ahead of it and just hope it doesn't bite us in the ass. Let's talk about it like it's a publicity event. Listen, you're tired. Why don't you get into bed, get some rest. Tomorrow afternoon, come over to my penthouse and we can talk it through then. Sound good? Okay. I don't know what dirt spec had on you, and I don't care. It's nothing we can't handle. And remember, it's not your fault. Yeah, the reviews have all been coming in, and they're just great. Right. Yeah. Well, we're going to have the biggest book of the year, guaranteed. Right. It's Margo. We need to double security for tomorrow night's hotel event. Maybe get an ambulance standing by for some added attention, capitalize on the public's morbid curiosity. You know, Julia's stopping by in a few minutes. Well, I'll talk her into it even if it kills me. Right. Okay. And in other news surrounding the already infamous best-selling book, Grave Misconduct, author Julia London discovered the body of an apparent suicide victim, William Speck, a crime novelist, Good. found dead in his garage last night. Hey, can I ask you something? You're that lady from television, ain't you? I'm sorry, you've mistaken me for someone else. Nah, it's you. <laughs> I got a thing for faces. You wrote that murder book. I want to tell you how to stuff people and get away with it. Do you read it? No way, I can't read stuff like that. Nightmares? No. Got it on CD. I'll do all my reading through my ears. Could I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Where do you get all those crazy ideas? Miss London was brought in for questioning, but no charges were pressed. This is the second incident which parallels the plot of grave misconduct. The first was Cricket Jones, the book's publicist. She was found dead in her hotel room last week. Gordon McGuire, the publishing company, reports record sales in light of these unfortunate events. Someone there? Okay, here we are, and it comes to on the house. The ride is on the house. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, uh, Miss London! I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, Miss London, Miss London. <laughs> I'm sorry, can I, uh, oh. can I get your autograph? Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry to bother you. Let me get out the joke. Now, maybe you can use, uh... Oh, sorry.
this is. We need to talk. You read my mind. But not here. I just can't be here anymore. How about down at the station? I'm going to ask you to trust me because I want to come clean about everything. I have to take you somewhere first. It, listen, if, if you want to take me in after that, you can. I won't fight you. Fair enough. where it all began. If I could come back here a year ago and redo it all, I would. All right, I need some answers. Why is everyone with a connection to your book dying? It's not my book. This isn't a game, Julia. Stop dodging my questions. I'll take you downtown. I stole it. I stole it from Angela Drum. I read that manuscript. It was brilliant. And yes, I was jealous. But I wasn't gonna steal it. I, I was on my way to return it when I found out that Angela had killed herself. And everything was just so messed up. And I had a deadline and I had no book. And there was that brilliant manuscript, unread and the next thing you know, I turned it in, and it was my book. Okay. Sorry. Look, I'm not the library police. I do homicide, not plagiarism. I couldn't care less about fiction right now. The fact is, people are dying. And if what you're telling me is true, someone knows you stole that book. Someone deadly. Yes, I'm telling you, it's Angela. She's alive. I saw her. So what can you tell me about her? We were writing friends. We talked about structure and, and dialogue. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you, but she's alive. Until I get confirmation of her death from the coroner's office, I'll consider that possibility. But until then, don't change any of your routines. I can't do that. Yes, you can. I don't... Whatever your plans were for the rest of the tour, stick to them. I'm gonna ask a few questions. See what I can dig up on Angela. You just try to remain calm and stay in the spotlight. As long as you're in public, you should be safe. Yeah, Kyle. Hi, this is Julia. I I don't know if this is important or not, but but I, I remember something. Angela got a phone call the night she was killed. She was seeing someone. I I, I had never met him. All right, I'll see what I can do on that. Okay. Catch you later. with the writers group so you were in the writers group too right did you ever notice uh, being depressed or... is there anything else you can tell me about Angela John anything at all no. 
And how well did you know Angela? She was an employee. And not a model one. Uh, what can you tell me about the writers' group she belonged to? Dreamers, the whole lot of them. All with the design of becoming the next Catherine Hallow. As if her life was anything to write home about. Did you know that Catherine Hallow killed someone when she was in her teens? No, I didn't. What happened? She conspired with a girlfriend and murdered the poor girl's mother. Angela had a particular interest in her. As a matter of fact, a janitor cleaning out some old lockers found some of Angela's belongings. Well, shouldn't those have been turned over to the police? Angela Drone committed suicide, Detective. The police weren't terribly interested at the time. I'll need to see what that janitor found. I'll also need a, a list of everyone involved with the writer's group and contact information if you have it. I should have an old pamphlet in my files. Evelyn. so much for your interest in my work and the kind words. If you're interested and available, I'll be at a signing at Brock's Books on 6th Street on Tuesday, October 2nd. I'm always pleased to meet fans face to face. Sincerely, Catherine Hallow. October 2nd. Two weeks later, she was dead. This is Detective Baxter Kyle. I need to speak to someone about Catherine Hallow, please. stop before the countrywide tour begins, and it's the most important. Margo would want us to see this through to the end. No. Margo's among the dead now. So don't put the blame on our coffin. And don't think we haven't noticed your sudden job promotion. Connolly's put you in charge now. Margo's murder hasn't hurt your career one bit. I resent that, Miranda. And if you'd like to leave, it's perfectly fine with me. Well, you're the one who suggested we stick to the schedule. If anyone listened to me, we would have quit this, after the first murder. This has been a long and difficult journey. Let's uh, begin the climax, shall we? You know I'm right. Come on. I'll go fine. I'm trusting your judgment in this. Personally, I think Miranda's right. Come on, Trent, let's just go. Gentlemen, kindly take your seats. It's time. <clears throat> Thank you. Before we begin this evening's events, my friend and colleague, Mr. Jason Connolly, president of Gordon McGuire Publishing, would like to have a few moments of your time. Jason? Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, the publishing world has suffered a great loss, Margot Lawrence. For many years, she was an asset to Gordon McGuire Publishing and to many of our writers. She was a dear friend, I know she was to me. So I just want to ask you if you will uh, join me in honoring Margot tonight for the moment of silence, please.
Thank you all. Mixing liquor may not be a very good idea right now, Jules. What did you call me? Julia, you're acting irrational. I know you've been under a lot of stress, but... No, you called me Jules. Why did you call me that? No one calls me that except Angela, and she's dead. Angela Drone is dead. Angela Drone? I knew Angela Drone. Julia, don't look at me like that. Just let her go. She's a psycho. So she wanted out of her contract, and you guys wouldn't let her out, huh? Hmm. All right. No, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Hell of a motive. Angela Drone effect.
Hi, this is Trent Dodson. Leave a message. I'll call you back as soon as I can. Thank you. What the hell? identity. Julia? Julia, where are you? You've done something very bad. You stole my book. My book! Do you have any idea how long I spent writing that story? Do you? It wasn't meant to be published. It was confidential! The doctors advised me that it'd be good for me to write down my feelings. I didn't have any feelings, at least not normal ones. You helped me achieve them all. Oh, come on, you can't run away. I know this place too well. It's all been planned. No getting out of here. Dodson. No, wait. Actually, it's Joe Hurt. Wanted in connection with multiple homicides. I'm on my way to the Roosevelt now. I'll need backup. Uh, Roger 2, David 1. We've got reports of an incident coming in from the Roosevelt at this time. Over. What sort of incident? That is unclear. Some kind of disturbance. Uh, the caller did reference your suspect. Over. Patch it through. Roger. What are you doing? I'm going to kill you. Stage it as a suicide. Sound familiar? The time-honored tradition of drug overdose invariably works without fail. Combine a victim possessed of melancholy with a narcotic cocktail, and it's murder by numbers. You like that? It's in the last chapter of my book. I thought Angela... Angela didn't write it! I did! I saw her. You saw a paid intern who resembled her. Who was actually quite obedient at first, but then... Got a little bit too curious, and she met with an accidental death, too. Your fear and the drugs I gave you, they made it very convincing. You remember when I brought you water? The talk show? It worked very well. It worked very well. 
Trent, please don't do no, this. Stop, it's too late. You're the last one. Oh, God, you killed them all. Why? Angela gave you my book without my permission. It ended up being a fatal mistake. She did it because she cared about you. She wanted to encourage you. And you killed her for it. I was in a rage, a bit out of control. I wasn't thinking clearly. I was surprised I got away with it. But it gave me a taste. And, uh... I liked it. The others I planned more carefully. Cricket's death gave us the publicity we needed. When Billy Speck threatened my plan, he had to go. And Margot, she published it. So she had to uh, fly. But you, you stole it from me. I'm sorry, Trent. I'm sorry. The book is out now. I can't do anything about it. I would recall it if I could. Imagine the publicity. Celebrated author Julia London caps off her meteoric career by writing a suicide note and admits to killing everyone around her. <laughs> That's a perfect thematic closure, don't you think? Please don't do this. Oh, you forced me to. Think of it this way. You're going to be more famous in death than you were in life. Now. may concern. What the hell kind of opening is that? You've got to make it more personal. Engage the reader. Start over. I can't! I am not writing it! Fire, you, Jules! I already did that! Hey! Hey! What are they holding around the convention? Get my purse. We're going to... Okay. Oh, thank God. The police are here. We've been attacked. Julia, where is she? Why is it always Julia? I'm the one in trouble here. We don't know where Julia is. To my fans and friends. That's better. A bit maudlin. But I like it. Keep going. Keep going. Tell them how you killed Cricket. How you killed Billy Speck. How you killed Margot. How you just couldn't live with the guilt of it all. Sentence structure is as bad as your handwriting. I can tell your heart's not in it. Start again! Again! Nothing but a hack. Keep going. She sent me his photo a year ago. I never put it together. Uh. Okay. 
He killed them all. That's okay, it's okay. She's alive. I've got units coming, okay? He killed them all. He killed them all. It's all right. He's crazy. This can be real tough. She's still pretty shaken up? Yes, she is. I saw you on television talking about friend gods. His story was quite a horror show. Yeah, worse than you know. In and out of mental institutions as a kid. Committed manslaughter when he was 14. Spent years in an asylum, writing down his most paranoid, violent fantasies. The newspaper said that the lunatic from the charity dinner was institutionalized with Trent, is that true? Seems like it. We think he remembered Trent's writing and got a little confused when he heard it again. Trent's shrink encouraged him to vent his rage in prose, but in his case, the treatment backfired. And the public was glad to pay for every gory detail of it. And I, I wanna make it up to them. Um, all I really wanna say is that I know what I did was wrong. Well, I guess that's it. Take care, Detective. You too, Catherine. Yes, I am glad the truth is out. And that's really all I have to say. Please, yes. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Detective? Hey, I'll just stop by to see it through to the end. You know, you're doing the right thing going public. Am I? I don't know. Pretty nerve-wracking. We're asking a lot of hard questions. Well, they have a right to ask. How'd your publishers take it? Well, they agreed not to press charges. If I write a tell-all book about the whole thing. We think it's gonna be a big seller. I'm gonna dedicate it to Angela. That's great. Look, if you need anything. I've got your card. I'll be okay. Besides, the worst is over, right? Take you up there? No. I need to do this myself. I have to. I have to. 